a go. Good evening, everyone, to another episode of Dan Does Data. We're back after a hiatus last week, and we are back to a traditional kind of problem that we're working on, the bardic lore problem of trying to recognize Shakespearean text using probably recurrent neural networks. So if you recall last time, uh, we slapped together a simple model using data from Shakespeare, all of Shakespeare's plays and sonnets. We were trying to generate his text, but we ran into some problems. Uh, I trained a very simple model, however, that model itself, eh, it always liked to predict predict uh, spaces. Uh, I had T's here, but that was an old, old model. And I think part of the problem was that in the data set, there was a lot of sequences where it would be space, 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 one, new line, then some text. So as though the you one was like centered on a line of text. And so that created a prediction that, uh, you know, anytime you get a space, you know, there's, there's a good chance you're going to get another space. So we need to fix that. And I wanted to fix a couple other things in the model. Like we don't have any embedding layers or anything like that. So I want to try to handle some of these things. So let's just start off at the top. For those not familiar, uh, we're sort of following along an example uh, from the Keras LSDM text generation. Not exactly though. And also the well-known unreasonable effectiveness of recurrent neural networks uh, uh, article from Carpathy. And we're using Keras to do this because that's let, that lets us focus on the fun stuff and we don't have to worry about the unfun stuff. All right, so let's load in some of our data, or load in our libraries first. Let me change the colors a little here. One thing I re should realize I should have done, I should have used the string library last time. Somebody should have yelled at me for that. Because I don't need to specify the lowers myself, I can just say string dot ASCII lowers. Lowers? String dot ASCII lowercase. There it is. And then I don't have to try to remember what that is anymore. Because that's that's just asking for a typo. Alright, so what are we doing here? I'm taking the set of all things in the raw text. You might recall, raw text looks like this. It's capitalized, it's got numbers, it's got new lines, it's got all this kind of stuff. I don't want any of that. Uh, so these are all the things that are not lowercase letters. But these are all things that are not letters, I should say. Uh, let's put them all together in a nice big list. And then I'm going to allow certain forms of punctuation. So lowercase letters plus a few other things. New lines, some spaces, some other stuff that I decided was okay to have. And I feel like I should consider sorting that, but we'll do that. All right, what are we doing here? What is D? Uh, D maps all the old stuff into the new stuff. So if I see like a pipe character in the original text, I'm just replacing that with a space. I'm replacing anything I haven't seen with a space. And that's what this is. If it's in the set raw dot lower, or sorry, 4K, if K isn't allowed. If it's in my allowed set, keep it. Otherwise, replace it with a space. And then we're, you use that to make a translation uh, table, the string dot make trans. You can't use the dictionary directly because reasons, apparently. Uh, so DD, let's see, is this? Okay, DD is the actual library, and it, it's got the actual byte values that you're interested in. So do this, and now we have a revised data set. However, there is one thing I want to fix, and that is I've got lots of lots of places. I want to squeeze out these lots of spaces between all look at all these spaces. All these spaces, I want to squeeze those out. And I want to squeeze out uh, anything else. So we need to fix up the data a little bit. Let me take out this old comment. Collect repeated spaces, new lines. Uh, probably just spaces and new lines. I don't want to squeeze out repeated like letters, because you can have a double T, that's totally fine. Uh, double commas would be pretty weird. 
uh, double periods, that's normal. That's an ellipsis or other things like that. So that's fine. So just those two characters, I think. Maybe double tabs? Do I not have double tabs? Allowed. What's an allowed? That's the question. Ah! No. Uh, just new lines. Double exclamation points, you know, if it's a really serious statement. So here's a question. Can I say this? Okay. So I'm going to set up a while loop. While is in data. I'm going to say data equals data dot substitute data dot replace. There we go. Data dot replace of too long with one long. So I'll have to make uh, sort of like log n passes through the data where n is uh, the number of the long is the longest uh, size string I have. Right, because if it's 8, then I'll shrink it to 4, and then I'll shrink it to 2, and then I'll shrink it to 1. So no problem. So while that's true, do this. And while this is true, do this. And this might leave me, leave me with the occasional... Uh, there might be a bunch of spaces followed by a bunch of new lines, followed by a bunch of spaces. There might still be a handful extra, but this should deal with most of them, by far. Da -da 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 -da. Well, that's a lot. That's a lot of spaces. Oh my goodness. Oh no, shoot. Two in a row, two in a row. That's why I was going forever. So it almost certainly has gotten them all now. So you can ask this question. That is not true. Okay, perfect. So we got them all. And so now data of the first 100, there are a few places where we have slash n space slash n. You know what? Let's replace all those now that we're in the neighborhood, now that we've got this tool. So if we've got this, I want to replace it with one new line. So yeah, let's do that. Perfect. Okay, this looks a lot more reasonable now. And set of data equals allowed. True, perfect. So let's make a list of all our data points. We're going to have a bunch of stuff, and then we're going to have A to Z. That actually seems like the wrong thing to do. I want. I'd rather have A to Z come first, so I can like easily know what uh, type of character I'm dealing with. So we're going to change it to be that way. So you're going to be list of lowers plus extra. There we go. Extra is not defined because I haven't actually run that yet. There we go. Chars. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So previously, I had sort of arbitrarily selected an unroll length of uh, 40. And actually, I think this would be a good use case for busting out some GIMP and drawing a picture. So what is the unroll length? Uh, and that's, I feel it is an unintuitive, uh, like leaky abstraction of the, the RNN universe. Let me change the size of this and use like a pen, pencil. So you've got typical RNN type stuff. You got some inputs. You go into whatever your recurrent cell is. It passes some stuff out. Uh, and you also pass things to the next time step, right? And you get things from the previous time step. Let me make this RNN, recurrent neural network. And you've got some, some output over here and some input over here. Input in my world always goes in at the top because that just makes more sense. So if you're very careful about your construction, uh, you don't need to worry about how far back you're going, it's just whatever history you happen to have. Uh, computationally, however, it's a lot easier if you only consider back n steps, where n is 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever makes sense in your universe. Uh, if you have sequences of fixed length, 
or of some known maximum length, then your n is sort of fixed. You're like, oh, I know it's going to be 10 or something like that. In this case, we're not. Just we're generating one long text or a text so long that it effectively doesn't matter, like an entire play or something. So uh, what you can do is you can set an upper limit on this. And then when you do that, you're going to recast your data as a uh, that's maybe an A, O, B, whatever. You're going to recast your data as this entire vector of outputs for n long. And then you're trying to predict sort of all of those at once, although you're most interested in the one at the end. And now, instead of uh, modeling like one small section, computationally, what the machine learning backend is going to do is do this whole model at once, unrolled this recurrent relationship. Uh, recall that you will often see this kind of picture drawn as something like this. Dunk. And so if you unroll that into the actual, you know, 10 or whatever copies of that uh, recurrent neural network section of that, then you can just do all the computations. Then it's just a more complicated graph. And you actually can get away without doing the recurrent part at all if you really wanted to. So you do this for every, for every data point. So you've got some sliding vector. It's going to be AOB or whatever for one of them. The next one's going to be OB, whatever comes next, uh, something like that. So that's this unroll length business. It's a, a computational artifact, I'll say, maybe a convenience. If you're in TensorFlow, it, you do have dynamic RNN, but I don't know if that's accessible via Keras. I would love, I would love to know more about that. Anyway, last time I kind of arbitrarily chose 40, and uh, one of the things is that this is going to like increase your memory size as you're when you're training because you've got to expand the vectors from being like one long objects or however long into 40 times as long or however un however much longer. I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to cut that in half and say 20. Step size is one. I don't remember what step size is. We'll get to that later, I guess. I think that's how many characters at once I'm willing to consider. And I want, or not how many characters at once. Uh, how many characters forward, forward I want to consider, which I believe is one. Char indices and indices char. These will map my characters to my indices in my chars list. So char indices, yes. That is correct. A is in fact zero, and Z is 25. Yep, it all makes sense. And indices char, same kind of story. Perfect. So we need to build a simple LCM model. Last time, print to build model, yeah. Uh, I just made the model and I dumped it, and I dumped the uh, like one hot format stuff, which is to say max length times the length of my char char chars. What is the length of chars? How many characters do I have? 32? 34. Man, bummer. Uh, 34 times 20 is how many I'm going to have. Each input is going to be 680 things because I need to do that whole unrolled business because they're one hot encoded, so that means they're 34 long and I have 20 of them. However, you can, what is typically done is you take your this space, this one hot encoding, where the character, I don't know, D, is going to map D is going to become like zero comma zero comma zero comma one comma zero comma zero da 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 so on and so forth. That's the one hot embedding of the character D in this universe. The embedding will map that into a space of into a vector of uh, real numbers, like maybe three point two two point two point oh negative one negative 10, whatever, and 78, 778, whatever, of however long you specify it to be. And the mapping from the one hot universe to this universe is something that your model is going to learn. I feel this was poorly explained when I was learning recurrent neural networks, so I'm explaining it now. Anyway, I didn't do that last time. Uh, but this is part of Keras. Uh, the question is, did I actually... I didn't actually import that part of Keras. Also, I'm using Keras 2.0 for the first time. Uh, not the first time, for among the first time. Uh, K, 
Keras dot layers dot is it embeddings? No, hey. Dot embedding. What do you know? Perfect. We will import that from Keras dot layers dot embeddings import embedding. Perfect. Wunderbar. And so we just need to give it the input shape first of all. So we're going to move that from this section. Embedding. There we go. And how many uh, characters we wish to embed in it. So right now we're sort of in a space of 34, really much less than that since it's always one hot. So it's really like a five bit space. Yeah, and I guess in the real numbers, you could map all those to different real numbers. Anyway, uh, I want to say, let's just say 16 just to get started. So it's actually a smaller space in a sense, fewer numbers, but they're real valued, not zero one. So they can sort of be whatever you want them to be. Uh, I think we can do this. And then, It's taken a long time, longer than I would have expected. I probably still have, yes. Come on, there we go. Acquired one positional argument, output dimension. That's curious. The embedding not work as how as I thought it did. Input, model will take is input in input matrix of size, batch, comma, input length. The largest integer word index should be no larger than 999, vocabulary size. That's weird. Input dimension, output dimension, size of vocabulary, one plus maximum index occurring in the input data. Dimension for the dense embedding. Interesting. Okay. Like the chars, I guess. I thought when I used it as input shape, I could get away without doing it. Not found. All right, well, let's just change then. Well, maybe not. Let's see if that works. Okay, that seems to be fine. Then we get to the long short-term memory cells, the actual recurrent part of our recurrent neural network. Uh, you can have it sort of an arbitrary number of units, which is how many values you're computing on the inside uh, that you're going to pass on to the next layer, and some of the information will be passed on to the next time step. Uh, I don't think I need to worry about any of this. Oh, dropout's built in? I had no idea. That's super cool. Uh, okay, let's let's just leave that as is. Input zero is incompatible with layer LCM one. Expected M dim three, found in dim four. Lies. All right, so clearly embedding has changed. It is no longer what I thought it was. Output shape 20 comma 16. That's, that's curious. Uh, maybe this is not the, do I need input shape anymore? Maybe I don't need input shape. Let's see if we don't need that anymore. Let's see if we can get away with that. I can. Oh. And then our final, we need to predict the probabilities of each character coming out. So you do a final uh, soft max activation, also known as logistic regression, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm not actually using this optimizer, so I'm not going to turn that on. Because it's basically logistic regression, you can use categorical cross entropy as your error function, your metric. Uh, it's no longer called num nb epics. Now it's called epics. Truncate the data and reshape. What am I doing with this num blocks? All right, so I have to remember what the heck I was doing because I haven't looked at this code in several weeks. I am grabbing the first block of data, so the first tenth of data. and I'm just recasting it into this shape. I'm truncating the data to the to an even number of blocks. Right. So the near the uh, nearest power, not the nearest, but the 
truncating the data so it has a length 0 mod 10, so I can cut it up into 10 even chunks. Then, what am I doing here? Then, oh my gosh, numpy list of data dot reshape, why? Why would I do that? Why would I not just reshape it? That makes no sense. Data dot shape? Oh, it's a string object. Oh, well that explains a lot. That's why I do that. And then I'm just reshaping it all. So I have 10 blocks, each half a million long. And this is gonna be so I don't destroy my computer. Because what I'm going to do is just do handle a tenth of the data at a time. Because I need to convert each each data point, each of these half million things, is going to be times max length times length of chars. That's the input size. And so now you're looking at... Uh, 340 million elements. If each one of those is uh, float 64, well now you're now you're feeling burned because now you're talking eight eight bytes for each one of those. Suggestion from the audience to try TF Learn. Uh, I did try out TF Learn at one point in an earlier video. Uh, I found that I still like Keras more. When the Keras part of TensorFlow becomes integrated, I will give that another look and see how that changes. Anyway, 2.7 gigs if you're using Float64s. That's a lot. So be careful, okay? Just, just be careful. So let's change that. So we're going to go one epic at a time through each, each block, and we're going to see what it does. So what we do here, uh, get some empty lists, and I'm going to build those uh, max length times number of chars. Uh, those one hot sequences. That's what this encoding in the one hot business is. And I'm storing it in numpy.un8. So one eighth the size. So 340 megs, not huge. I'll have to do it twice? No, not twice. Let's see what happens when I run this. This should be, and we're checking model. Expected embeddings that have two dimensions, got an array of shape, whatever, whatever, whatever. One of these days, one of these days, man. All right, so when I try this, it doesn't like it. Because... It doesn't say input shape, which is kind of irritating. So something about the embedding it does not like. Embedding. Let's see if we can fix this. Input length. The model will take as an in oh okay okay hang on input length equals max length let's try that so rebuild this I've already got my data set up just fine let's see if this even runs nope it's to have two dimensions we got array with shape such and such such and such you should expect it to have more than two dimensions your lies lies and slander. Output shape. Hmm. Embedding. This is generating 32 by 10. Model will take as input an integer matrix of size, batch, comma, input length. But it's not a batch. Turns positive integers indices into dense vectors of fixed size. Oh, I don't need to one hot it. That's interesting. Positive integers into dense vectors of fixed size. That's curious. I didn't realize I can get away with that. Huh, what do you know? All right then. Uh, then I don't need to do a lot of this silliness. I can probably... Uh, maybe not required. 
Uh, maybe not required. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Yeah, so data looks all mucked up now, but that's fine. I can fix that. Data's data's okay. I can I can work with data. <laughs> I should move this up here, in fact. So what do I want to do here? I want to move this below this so I don't forget about it, actually. So, it should be expecting the one hot stuff. Still. In the output. In the input, however. Can I just use... Dead of zero... Dot D type equals numpy dot U it. Can I get away with this? Is that something I can do? Or is it going to screw me? It doesn't like that. That might be the same thing. Data 0.dtype. Dtype not found. Lies. Lies, lies, lies. Numpy.array.dtype. Not found. Uh, but you don't tell me what the uh, various data types are, do you? You one. You one. Uh, Alright, never mind. Don't have time for fiddling with that. Leave myself a comment here. No one hot required for embedded. I 100% thought it was. That might be a change in Keras too, which is certainly convenient. Yeah, certainly convenient. What do I want to do here? Don't I? I don't need the max length things even. Uh, God, stupid gimp. Go away. Shoo, shoo, stupid gimp stuff. You're gone. You're done. No more. No more. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Okay. So what is embedding expecting? Integer matrix of size, batch, comma, input length. Okay. So I still need 20 things. 20 odd things. So I still need the 20 times whatever. All right. You know what? We're just going to. We're gonna fix it in this this context. So I don't need one hot encoded of this. Length sentences, this does not need to be one hot encoded. Stick with dense, dense encoding, there we go. And what are we doing here? This now, is just going to equal whatever that dense encoding is, rather than doing other silly stuff. Good gravy, what was this doing? That creates one big long vector. This says that the next, oh boy. What is x now? However many sentences I have, which is the length of my block, and whatever my length, the number of sequence elements that I have. For t comma char enumerate sentences zero. So for all my sentences. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Enumerate sentences. That steps through the number of sentences? What the hell's I? I doesn't exist anymore. Where's I? Going crazy. I is zero. I is always zero. What? Oh, because I copied this stuff from down here. One of these days. Yeah, this stuff is what I did first, and then I did this stuff. Maybe I should just try to uh, 
not go crazy. Just, ugh, let me pull this out, I'm, otherwise I'm going to lose my mind. going to lose my mind. Sentences. So, sentences. What the hell is sentences? Sentences dot shape. It's a list, isn't it? Yeah. Length sentences. Sentences. There we go. Okay. Yes, that's my half million blobs of information. So, this is working through the first sentence. It says that in each position of this sentence, whatever the character is, stuff that in the right place here. Yes, that is what I want. And what are we saying then? For every sentence thereafter. Ah, <laughs> for every sentence thereafter, set it to whatever the previous guy was. Why the heck do I do something different for the last guy? Why would that make sense? That's so weird. So strange. So strange. Well, if X is only going to be too long object, then I don't even think I need to screw around with it anymore, do I? Although, maybe I do. So the next, jeez, oh man. The next sentence, I plus one, where I starts with zero, so that's why these are all ones. Oh, but this does start with the first sentence. All right, well, whatever. And everything but the last, yes, okay, this is making sense now. Everything but the last element is just the same as the previous X array, starting one off, yes, okay. However, this, oh boy. But what I want is the next element, sentences one. Sentences one. What is the next char, the next to last char of this? No, this should be next chars of, next chars of, Hang on, I of I, char indices, there we go, now I think I got this, doink, okay, this should be correct, so I mean this is the same as whatever this Y thing is, except densely encoded, whereas this is the one hot encoding business. Now let's see if I did this right. Eh, that's, that is always the, the challenge. Big money, big money, no whammies, no whammies. Let's see what happens. Doing some stuff, it's thinking. Maybe that's good news. Means the model's probably compiling. Now let's see it blow up in my face. That's not too bad. 30 minutes to uh, run in the model. That's not too bad at all. So we're going to save a wait, save the waits after every pass through the data. Uh, if you believe uh, this Keras LSTM text generation example in the GitHub repo, they claim it'll be 20 epics, but I forget how much data they're using. Because we've got half a million times 10, we've got 5 million. Uh, examples, whereas they might only have, I don't recall how many, half a million? 
One million? If we've got five times as much data, we might only need two epics, you know, to start getting something that makes sense. <laughs> okay, and I was doing something slick here uh, where I initiated a class object in order to generate text. I'm going to have to fix that. Is this really taking this long? Using up all my memory? Not all my memory, okay. But I'm going to need to fix this because I no longer want to say self dot one not. Ah, look at this. Now five minutes, four minutes, or 400 seconds. Yeah, it's gotten down the seconds pretty quick. Okay, so maybe, you know, 360 is six minutes to train. Maybe a little less. There it goes. Now it's a little more reasonable. Five to six minutes to train per epic. Per epic through one tenth of the data. <laughs> that's that's the catch. So we're gonna let that train a little bit while we try to think of how to improve uh, this class object here. So max lang is now twenty. That's less default. I mean that's the default. I don't have to I really don't have to change the defaults, but I kind of want to. Uh, with this one hot encoding stuff. I don't need the one hot encoded object all the time. Uh, but I do want like another object. Self dot dense maybe? Yeah. Let me Self dot dense equals numpy dot argmax of self dot one hot axis equals one, I think. So each row might be axis equals zero there. Each row or whatever. This will pull out the indice with the largest value, which is the one. So that's just an easy way to recompute that. Here we continually muck around with the dense value, and here, predict classes. There we go. No longer self.1hot, but is now self.dense. I think that's what we want. I think so. Not 100% sure. We keep adding to the text. Self.chars IDX. Why is this zero? Predict classes? Does that? Oh, that predicts the actual class output. But I would rather predict the probabilities. So I think I want to do this. And I want to predict the probabilities and then sample from them, right? Uh, so IDX is then going to be numpy dot random dot sample. Look this up. By random sample distribution. If I provide distribution, can you provide me the sampling? Actually, I think this is in here in the LSTM example. Da, 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 da. Where do they do it? Model dot predict. Oh, they have this special sample routine. Uh, da, 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 da. They say preds. Yeah, where? This is just the first element. Eh. Right, and it should be the first element because I'm nominally predicting multiple things. Probs. Probs. There we go. So we should. Self.sample? Hmm. Interesting idea. No. Eh. Yeah, sure. We'll make it a make it a method here. Def sample self. Probs diversity equals zero point five. So diversity will spread out 
make me make us guess uh, less likely uh, characters with higher probability. So rather than if if your model is like super overtrained or super fixated on certain characters, that'll help spread it out a little bit. You can make sure your model can sort of move from one topic in a sense to another or different words. Uh, so what do they do for this sample? That's what I'm curious. Helper function to sample index from probability array. They take their probabilities, they recast them as flow 64s, that's fine. They take the log of them and divide by this temperature, which is the diversity argument. The log over the temperature. I gotta, I'm gotta. i about to open GIMP. I can't think, think like that. Do I have colored paint on here? I don't. I really should. I should install that. Rather than continue this ASCII, this continue this charade. <sighs> View, I gotta show my windows. Windows. Layers, windows, toolbox. Okay, good. Uh, there we go. Pencil. So what do they do? They've got their things, they take the log of them. It's just so I can not go crazy. I took ln of p divided by the temperature whatever the diversity is. And then they exponentiate again. So this, okay, this is how you squish the probabilities, right? And then you reset your P prime equals E to the all that jazz. And what do they do? All right, so the random catch, the catch that I need is this last line here is numpy to random that multinomial. That's what I need. Why? I don't understand why those things in system be that dumb. Stop it! Stop it, stop it, stop it! There we go. So you make a new probability distribution based on that, I guess. Uh... Yeah, there we go. So I could just do this. And this will always always sample from uh, the base distribution. Or I can just uh, prop b's we'll say is numpy.log probs divided by diversity don't let diversity be zero. And this should be numpy.exp. Numpy.exp. What are they doing different here? Oh, they rescale everything. Yes, that is important. That's all this line is, rescaling to be probabilities. Uh, sure, we'll call this exp preds to be similar. Preds, 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 cool. And then whatever you happen to get out for that is fine. So that's how we'll choose the next character. And then we'll show that. And then we can hopefully have some, some stuff here. Model primer. You step a certain amount. You do this dense business. Okay, so I'd like to wait another two minutes here uh, for the model to finish at least one another blob of training data. As you can see, our validation accuracy was actually better than our base accuracy. That's curious. Uh, however, our regular accuracy here is climbing-ish. That's that's something. That's not nothing. Then we'll run our, we'll load in our class object, and we'll see what kind of text we're generating. Uh, I do not expect it to be particularly good, but like if it's kind of random, that's okay because I can always let it run in the background for a little bit and see how that does. 
And then this model might actually be decent in the sense that it's running and doing something. And then at that point, it becomes just a matter of uh, futzing around with this model, the model section here. For example, changing the size of the embedding, adding more LSTM layers. Uh, note, if you are adding more STM layers, you usually need return sequences equals true if you want another layer, for example. The last layer does not need that. I believe that's the case. That used to be the case. Maybe it's not anymore. Okay, this is almost done. This like five minutes of training is almost tolerable. Almost. Yeah, and it's predicting that to get through everything, the 10 passes that I want, or to get through all the data, will take an hour, which is 10 blocks of, you know, five to six minutes, that makes sense. So it would take 10 hours uh, to pass through all of the data 10 times, which I think is what I nominally told it to do. I don't remember now. Yes, nominally 10 times, so 10 hours. So train it overnight, you know. All right, we're gonna interrupt that right there. I will save the weights, whatever I have right now, and we're gonna see how this does, and then I think we're gonna call it a day. That was a successful, successful venture. Let's see if this still works now. Can I make it? Yeah, there we go. Bill, perfect. Air one checking. Bah, 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 bah. Got a ray with shape 134. Okay, what did we do wrong here? What did we do wrong? Let's see. Up, up, up. Okay, so what is self.dense? Uh, how long is self.dense? Maybe that's my problem. That was a lot of zeros, too. It's a lot of A's. Seems not correct. That is a lot of A's. Who's I? Might have to look into that. Okay, self.dense. Oh, maybe I did this wrong. That's uh, entirely possible. Bill dot one hot. Yeah, okay, so that's not crazy. No, that's not crazy. NumPy dot arg max. Bill dot one hot axis equals zero. Well, that's fascinating. One. One comma thirty-four. No, that ain't right. How about that? That shape. One comma twenty. All right, that makes a little more sense. So x is equals two. My mistake. My mistake. That's all. Apparently, I don't need to do this, that it's already one law. So, make this axis equals two down here, and then we'll get this under shot. We will hopefully have a working model. Do that. Make the new model. Let's see what we get here. Is it gonna run? It's gonna choke? What's gonna happen? Diversity is not defined. Well, you know what? You're right. It's not. Whoa. Let's set the diversity when I initialize the model. Diversity equals 0 0.5. Much better. Diversity is still not defined. That's cute. I disagree. I think it is defined. I think you're full. Ah, it's self.diversity. Son of a gun! Self.diversity equals diversity. Diversity. There we go. 
Much better. Okay, one more time. One more time. Debugging. Always part of the process. Value error. Some of the p-vals is greater than one. All right, that's interesting. That shouldn't be true. Preds. Preds is not defined. Really? Well, maybe that's the problem. Preds. Not by that sum of preds. Is one. Is, uh, yeah. Oh, some of the p-vals up to all but the last one? Hang on. Down? P-vals is not defined. Yeah, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't be lying to me then. All right. No, not by that random dot multi no meal. Multivariate generalization of binomial, yada yada yada. Takes an experiment with one of p possible outcomes. Out of example, just throwing a die where the outcome can be one through six, yada yada yada. Right. All I want to do is return a probability. What are my options here? Eval size equals none. What is size then? Output shape, yes. And number of experiments. I have one experiment, a size one, given my p vals things. <sighs> Probabilities of each of the p different outcomes. These should sum to one. However, the last element is always assumed to account for the main probabilities. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Were some of them negative? No. Everything was hunky dory here. That's an irritation. If I say numpy dot sum of preds, negative, everything but the last one, you would still say 1.0. I see. I see. Oh, because it checks whether... No, it checks whether it's greater than. Sum of preds... Greater than 1.0? True. Well, that's curious. False. Yeah, figures. Figures. Get burned by this. Getting burned by Python rounding, that's irritating. All right, you know what? We can just like subtract epsilon. No, that's not a good idea. Not a good idea. All right, maybe in my sampling function, duh, 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 duh. Ah, no, sample, 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 sample. I was dividing by numpy.sum. Maybe I need to divide by regular sum, unfortunately. Uh, because numpy.sum, I don't know why I find it stupid that regular sum doesn't work and, oh geez, uh, numpy.sum do does, shouldn't multinomial be using numpy.sum? You would think. You'd really think so. Same problem. It's a lies and slander, I tell you. Lies and slander. All right, what am I missing in my sample? Divide by the temperature, exponentiate, divide the exponential. Divide by the temperature, yeah. They recast them. All right, you know what, fine, we'll, we'll try that. I maintain that shouldn't be a problem. Numpy.esra probs. So now they're float 64, so we have a whole lot more, dang it, again, ah, a whole lot more precision in our model. Okay. 
One more time. Can we make it work? All right, well, so our primer is uh, jumps over the lazy dog, right? The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy. So we truncate that to the last 20, jumps over the lazy, a there, there, what, where, wow, the mart. Uh, so what I find interesting is it's gotten a sense of how words are separated by spaces, at least. Uh, and hey, these letters are a lot more popular than others. Uh, it is by no means a like good model, uh, but it's doing something. How much more brain Ibinio? I don't know who Ibinio guy is. What is this? What is? Oh jeez. How much more brain? Yeah. So it's not great, uh, but it's doing something. Binio, send, beaster, our, min. So these are not perfect uh, sentences as yet. Let me modify my diversity. Let's use a little less diversity. Uh, point two. There we go. Oh, well, there's the Sith. I think we found the, the Sith connection between Shakespeare and the Force, more or less. So this model is doing something. It's not super great. It understands that a lot of words are three or four characters long. The is a really common word, obviously. Uh, other things, it perhaps needs to work on a fair bit. Uh, but the model still has a long, <clears throat> long, long way to go in terms of how it's going to learn. Um, I think it's learning German here. I'm not sure about that. Uh, this is a little more goofy. So we're going to let this train, and then maybe next time we'll come back and see what else we can do. Can we expand the model or simplify the model? What can we get done with a more complicated model? Uh, so I'm going to fiddle with that a little bit, and then we will be back next week. Yes, next week uh, to continue looking at this and hopefully learn some more stuff. I'm just glad we got a model that does something. It tries to work. It's got like, you know, 40% accuracy maybe, but that's okay. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good night. Don't forget, stay safe in the data mines.